Roberts and Andy Cage, so it's a very good conversation. And now, and now I've seen fifth scene with them. Professor Volkanende, you have done a PhD yourself. Can you please tell us something more about it? Well, uh, looking back, what I must say, it has been a great time uh, to write a PhD thesis. It's challenging. Uh, what happened in the 80s? I was working for the uh, think tank of the Christian Democrats in the Netherlands, the research institute of my political party. I was involved in social and economic issues, and I've written reports on development cooperation, on innovation, on economic growth and other issues. But then uh, I have the conviction that it was also good uh, to start work on a PhD thesis. I had a good friend at the Free University in Amsterdam, Professor Hendrik Jan de Ru, and already in the beginning of the 80s he said we should do something together. And then we took the decision uh, to start working on a thesis. That was in 1988. And the theme was government regulation and non-governmental organizations. And why did I choose it? You can imagine that when you're working for the Christian Democrats, we are talking about the role of the government, the civil society and the market. Uh, in the 80s, that was already the time of reforms. And then I thought, what is changing in practice? When you are talking about uh, work on new laws, are there changes? And then I discovered that there were no fundamental changes. And for me that was challenging just to analyze how things are working when you talk about the pros of regulation. I started with some concrete issues. Uh, the one was about social security, the other had to do with the transfer of knowledge in the sphere of uh, innovation. And the third was uh, the, our media system, our broadcasting system. What's the responsibility of the private broadcasting organizations in the Netherlands? And then after having done these concrete issues, then I spoke about the theoretical aspects, deregulation, privatization. I made some comparisons with the situation in the United States and the United Kingdom. And it has been a great time. I really enjoyed to write the PhD thesis. After 2010 elections, you resigned from politics. Today, you're a professor of institutions, governance, internationalization yep. at Erasmus University, and you're a partner at Ernst & Young. Can you please tell us about the transition? Um, I must say I've done the work as Prime Minister with a lot of interest and it was a fantastic time. It was challenging, of course, it takes a lot of time. It's not easy and you, of course you have your difficult uh, days. But it has been uh, great uh, to have been Prime Minister because you have the possibility to change things, to work on the long-term agenda. So it was fascinating to do it. But I must say the uh, transfer from the public uh, sphere to the private sphere is also very interesting. Uh, I must say, uh, for me, it's great to be now in the private sector uh, because you also can see that things are changing in the private sector. Talking about corporate responsibility means that you are working also on public issues but from a private perspective. And I think that's really fascinating. Your inaugural address at Erasmus University was about social responsibility. At Ernst & Young you're playing a leading role in their service offerings to corporate clients about corporate social responsibility. Can you please tell us what are your thoughts about CSR? What I notice is that uh, the issue of corporate responsibility is high on the agenda of companies. It has been in the past, but then it was more responsibility for a certain department of a company, some specialists, but now it's in the heart and minds of a lot of CEOs. Can you please tell us why companies engage in corporate social responsibility? Is it profitable for them? It, the situation is very clear. There are two definitions of corporate responsibility. One is about changing your policy. That means that uh, sustainability is high on your agenda and it is relevant for the whole production process. The other attitude is doing business in a more traditional way and then giving money to charity, research activities, hospitals and so on. To my opinion, uh, the dominant focus should be on the first direction. Because it has to do with how do you take the decisions? What's on your agenda? What is your responsibility? Um, not so long ago, Michael Porter, and he's a famous man, he wrote an article in the Harvard Business Review. And the title of that article was Creating Shared Value. And his message was very clear. He said, on the one hand, you must create economic 
value. Of course, you need profits, you must invest. But, he said, you have to combine it with social value by addressing the needs uh, of, uh, of society. So you have a combination of doing business, making profit, but on the other hand, also you have to contribute to the well-being of people. So what kind of organizational behavior is required inside the business to be fair and sustainable? This is really a very important issue. What does it mean for organizational behavior? Um, since 2005 in the Netherlands, you can see that things are changing completely. It is in the hearts and minds of a lot of CEOs. In earlier days, it was more a matter of responsibility for people uh, who were responsible for corporate responsibility. But it was not really the main focus of doing business. It only works if the CEO at the highest level is convinced that you have to change things. That means develop the, your business plans, take into account the role of your responsibility, convince the people in your organization to do things in another way. Talk about it with the CFO or the CEO. Everybody has to be convinced that you have to change things. We need a true conviction that you are responsible for global issues. That's on the agenda. And therefore, you have to change your organizational behavior. I'm talking now about the big companies. But what I notice in my country and other countries also that the SMEs are also busy today with changing their views, their way of uh, doing business. And I'm happy with it. We are living in a world that's changing. It is a turbulent period that we live in. The 2008 financial crisis, the current debt crisis in the US and Europe. It is a changing world. What are the implications this has on managing the organizations in the 21st century? Um, the issues of today are very complicated. What, what we need is the conviction that we have to fight for finding the right solutions. There must be a binding agreements when we talk about climate change issues. The financial sector must draw the lessons from what happened in the past. Governments must be willing to take the right decisions. That's all on the agenda now. So be transparent, work on more integrity, take into account the long-term agenda. And do not only talk about, let's say, the populist tendencies, what's on the news today, but try to develop a long-term strategy. And that strategy is a matter of uh, having new alliances between the private and the public sector. I think we have to work on it. And if not, then we get a situation that we will not solve the problems. And I think we have to do it. We are obliged to the next generations to find the right solutions. We will have a population of 9 billion people in 2050. Uh, we will have a lot of demand when we talk about uh, the supply of energy. So we have to think about the renewables. All these things are on our agenda. And therefore I think it's a fascinating time for young researchers to do your work. Uh, because also uh, researchers can contribute to finding the new solutions. And therefore I think it's really great to write a PhD thesis in the 21st century. Uh, all the people who are uh, visiting the conference are young people. Uh, and I really hope that the work that you are doing, the PhD uh, themes, that they can contribute to having a better world. That's on the agenda, and therefore I really hope that this conference will be a great success. Professor Balkananda, thank you. It was a pleasure having you with us.